This time on Pedalbox, we're picking up where we left off last time working on this when we got rudely interrupted by the rain and hopefully finishing up our intercooler fans plus a few other bits at the back of the car. The wiring for these fans is fairly simple, we just need to run them in parallel, deliver power and then have some way to turn them on, hopefully automatically when the ignition goes on. Now for power we're taking it off the original battery plate which has a bunch of blade fuses that run across the top of the battery for the various different outputs into the loom and there are also three individual cartridge fuses that we can use which are all 30 amps at the moment which is a little bit overkill for this but we can lower them, we can put some smaller ones in which are more reasonable to run these two 80 watt fans. I managed to find the connector in the loom that actually plugs onto that because we removed everything that those three cables depended on so we could just completely destroy this and get it out of the loom. Now I've left the other two just terminated with some heat shrink in that section so if we do need to add some more supplies on we still can. We don't have to try and find another cable and repin it but we now have a nice big fat power cable which will run all the way across onto this side of the car where we can put in the power relay. So this will take power in one side, hopefully triggered automatically from something further forward in the loom by the ignition and that will mean that these turn on at the same time as the car. What we're hoping to do is turn them on with the same circuitry that is actually deactivated when you crank so there's not an additional load on the battery. There's a few systems like the air conditioning which all power down when you crank the ignition over. So we're hoping to tap into that for signal so that these will, won't be on when the engine is cranking over. That's the plan anyway. The relay itself is just going to be housed with the ECU relay up here which I have also found the correct little box. So we have a nice little rubber grommet that has all the wires going through so it's protected from the elements as is the relay. So first up is to build a little wiring harness for these two fans at the back here. We'll just join them in, put a local ground into the back behind the number plate mounts which we're also going to build this time and we're also going to do some more work on this beam to put in our number plate lights because they have finally arrived so we can get a lot of things done at the back of the car. So in front of me I've got a little bit of a mess, we've got a couple of earth cables hooked up to our battery, we've got a couple of power cables hooked up to our battery, ignore that it's brown, it is a power jumper, and we've just got this here because the connector that all of this is being powered up by is in the front left corner of the engine bay where the battery's supposed to live, where obviously it doesn't reach to here. So we've got power hooked up to our relay, like properly hooked up, uh, we've got ground hooked up to it, and this wire that Adrian's holding onto here is basically what's going to pretend to be coming from our switch in the front of the car. So when Aid contacts that to the white pin, hopefully, the fans turn on. Neat. Yeah, so, op success. So now we can derig all of this, plumb it in properly, tidy it all up, and get our little relay box that we've currently got down here stuffed up in the corner where it's meant to be. So mostly buttoned up in here, we've got all of our cables running into the box, plumbed into the relay quite nicely, so that's all good. We've got our trigger wire, which is what's going to actually uh, switch the relay on. That's running forward into our little wiring harness, a uh, little cluster connector box thingy down in this corner here. And everything else is running into our intercooler fan loom, which is at the back. That's all one piece, locally grounded, quite nice and convenient. We've got power running across where it's eventually going to connect to a fuse outlet on the battery over there and we've got a local ground that we're going to tap in somewhere up in this corner that we haven't located yet. So that's going to be a future job. The only thing that we need to do after that is mounting the box itself to the body in some way that's relatively stable. So Aid is currently working on a bracket for that. We think we're probably going to mount it. There's a couple of bolt holes and sort of spare mounting points on the engine mount here that you can possibly see. So we're going to see if we can mount it onto one of those, and that should be all good for our intercoolers, for our power switching, for the engine uh, management system and everything else, which means I get to move on to something that we forgot about a few episodes ago. Now, at the end of the last episode, you'll see we introduced this big list here, which is all of the things that we need to add or modify and change ready for the IVA. 
there's quite a few on there. Not a massive list, but it's a big enough list that we're not going to be able to do like one thing per episode. We'll be here till next year at that rate. So I want to try and bash through a few of them that are at the back here while we can. Now, one thing that we neglected a while ago is when we installed our fog and reverse light here, we didn't check one of the legal requirements. It's supposed to be e-marked. Now, I'm pretty sure when we ordered it, we knew about the e-marking requirement. I'm pretty sure when we ordered it, we would have checked, does it say on the listing that it's e-marked? Unfortunately, whether we did or not, and whether it is or not, there is no marking visible on it. So when the IVA man comes round, or rather when we take the car to them, he's going to look, see no marking, and ban us from going on the road. So we'd have to get it retested and everything. So before that happens, we're just going to pull this off and replace it with the much more expensive, actually certified, actually marked one from Car Builder Solutions that on a previous stream you probably watched us not buy in favour of this one because this one was so much cheaper. So we're going to put that on, which means we're going to have to redo all the wiring that fed this. And while we're at it, while we're in this sort of neck of the woods, we're going to do a bit more lighting on the back of the car. So when we've got the number plate on, part of what you need is illumination for it. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head whether this has to be on all the time or only with the lights. But one way or another, we're going to have to have some little lights on here that illuminate the, the number plate so that it's still visible in the dark. Now, our plan at the minute is to take a tap for those off of our tail lights. So we've got a tail light feed coming into each side of the back of the car. We're going to run that into the number plate lights. Whenever our headlights are on, the tail lights come on with. The number plate lights come on with as well. And we're going to run a few, a few wires into our replacement lamp. So there's a few different bits and pieces going on here. And to make sure it's all decoupleable and workable onable, we're going to use this, which is a four pin connector, a nice sealed weatherproof connector, as previously used by one of the uh, O2 sensors on the exhaust of one of the cars that we've stripped apart here. So you can have a common ground that's going to go to all of the lights. And we've then got one switched connection each for our brake. Uh, sorry, not our brake, for our fog, our reverse, and our tail light feed. So all of these are going to run into the middle, which means we can actually disconnect stuff. So if we ever have to modify the wiring again, we can pull stuff back out and that'll all be fine. So more wiring and more adapting of this mounting bracket because once again, new light means uh, new mounting. So uh, may as well get started. So pretty much done with the wiring on these. We've made up a nice little wiring loom for them. We've taped them all together so it's quite neat in there. And we've sent it all through this big old cavity in front of the number plate where the uh, where the old lamps wiring went through. While we were in there, we noticed that some of the cables uh, for this lot end up kind of contacting the edge of the aluminium plate that's the back of the diffuser. So we've put some rubber edging strip around all of that to protect it all. We then got carried away and went around the exhaust tips as well, which um, is a nice little addition. It's going to be something that, we, it's something that we would have had to do eventually anyway, so may as well do it now while we're here and had the rollout. But this is all kind of roughly in place. We've got the number plate held on with a magnet just to give us the locations that everything else had to be in. And we've popped our, you know, made sure that all of our cable lengths are right. So this is all looking pretty good. So now we can go bulb by bulb and test them all. So this here, these four pins are the other side of that connector I showed you earlier. This is where I guess that would have probably been where the O2 sensor normally connected to the ECU, which we're obviously not doing anymore. So this black cable here is our ground. Uh, the brown one is, I think, for the number plate lights. So if I tap that, yep, the number plate lights are both on. So they're working great. Our blue and red one here, I remember, is the fog light. So that's the red in the center light there. And then finally, this uh, brown with a black stripe. Don't blame me for the colors. This is just what was pre-installed in the connector. This should be our reverse. And yeah, these are all working really, really well. Loads of light out of them. So we should be more than good ready for the IVA with these. Now to mount the number plate lights, we've decided to hang them off the bottom of the crash bar a little bit, which is a slight change of plan from where we were earlier. What we were hoping to do originally is mount them roughly centered in the crash bar, which if I use the rubber pad from this side, you'll see is just a tiny, tiny bit too tall for the bolt holes to actually both fit inside it. So you're gonna have to drop it down. And at that point we figured we may as well um, center align it with the number plate let the wires come out through underneath, which saves us having to drill holes through and send the wires through the crash bar, since we were going to have to weld a little plate on underneath anyway so that we could get that second screw hole in. So we've got a couple of little metal brackets here that we're going to weld on. Uh, we've got to clean off the paint and then get, get those on. And then we'll have a nice area for our number plate lights to fit onto, just like that. I appreciate this is a fairly dark shot for you guys to be watching, but there is a good point. We're obviously testing all of our bulbs and when better to do that than twilight. 
So you've got everything plumbed in, everything's mounted, all the brackets are welded on, we are all good, and obviously we've got our number plate magneted firmly in place, which means we can start testing to make sure all this stuff works properly. So we're going to try our number plate lights first. So they look, it looks great at the edges, but, and in fairness, this wasn't, you know, this isn't completely unpredictable, but there is not really a lot of light getting to the middle. So I think what we might do is like, rise these up or something, just put them on little spaces so that more of their light gets to the middle, because obviously it's quite a shallow angle across there. It could be that these are actually designed to go above or below the plate, where they throw like a wide beam of light, but not a very tall one for this. So maybe we relocate them, or maybe we just put them on risers, but they're probably going to be okay. There's plenty of light, it's just in the wrong place. So if we move on a bit and try our fog and reverse, I'm not sure which we're going to get first. Oh, we're getting fog. So that, from where I'm sitting, is not very bright, but that's because these are actually directional uh, reflector lenses, and I'm right now seeing a huge splodge of red light over there. It might actually be quite bright on the camera as well. So this is a pretty powerful fog light, which seems... Oh yeah, yeah, I really don't want to look into that. So that should be more than enough to get us through the test there. And if we try the reverse light out, yeah, I had to get out of the way of that one because I could see the LEDs. And yeah, again, properly bright. I'm seeing, again, loads of light behind the car. I think this is actually not just going to be enough to work as a kind of heads up I'm reversing thing, but this might actually be enough to properly illuminate behind us so that we can see where we're reversing towards, which in fairness, I think it's supposed to do, but it's nice that it can live up to that. So all of those seem to be working pretty well, at least uh, as far as the wiring and electronics are going. I think we could do with a couple of mechanical changes to the uh, number plate lights there. But with everything on, you can see there's quite a few photons uh, coming out the back here. So, um, op success. The last thing we're going to do today, because obviously it is now dark, is put the exhaust in. We got this back the other day, we've had the O2 bungs all welded up, so this is now finished, and that means we have a complete breathing system from the very front at the airbox on the top of the car, all the way down when we have the intake actually plumbed, we've got it off at the moment, right the way through the engine to the exhaust tips. Except for not having those O2 bungs in, because having not had these welded up, we didn't bother to buy any sensors. But we do have the wiring loom all ready for them. So that is another part that will be on order and we'll just put that in at a later date. There is one other thing about this, we've had a little plaque made up. We lost one of our friends last year who was actually our first patron. Zoe was uh, a long-time supporter of the channel. We have her in as she was number one as a legacy patron. Um, obviously she's uh, not with us now but I think everybody that knew her would agree that she was not a quiet person. She had a very distinctive and loud laugh, and we decided that the best place to, to uh, put a little memory of her was on the exhaust. Not least because all of her patron pledges basically paid for all of this exhaust material and the back box and all of the parts for it. So we thought that was quite fitting. And uh, we have checked with a number of other people, and they also agreed that this was definitely the right place to put it. So thank you very much, Zoe. The exhaust that you paid for about two years ago that we started building 12 months ago is finally going on the car and you're definitely living on in the rest of this build. Well, that it's a pretty successful episode. Despite only introducing this list very briefly last time, we've already managed to check a bunch of things off. So the uh, O2, O2 bungs. bungs are all in now, which is fantastic. We've also Rear sorted out rear edge lights, that is all fitted, and we have the means to fit our number plate on, although it is just magnetized at the moment. Uh, we've also sorted out our E-marked fog and reverse, so that is section 28 dealt with. So we've actually crossed off quite a few bits. There is obviously plenty more to do and the big one that we are very very concerned about is the anti-theft because you can't just have an isolator switch on the battery to count as anti-theft. You have to have either an immobilizer which I'd rather not put in at least right now or you have to have a steering lock and we broke our steering lock. It does not function at all. Now our planned answer for the steering lock problem is to just throw a new ignition barrel at it. And by new, I obviously mean 20 years old that we found on eBay for about 15p. So that's on its way. We've got a second brake warning uh, set yeah. level sensor on the way because we've got two reservoirs. And one, th one thing that we don't have on the way, but we have been prototyping in between episodes, redesigning, reprinting, test fitting, messing about with, 
is these brake and clutch switch holders. So there's a brake switch and a clutch switch in the, in the uh, footwell that we need to make sure they're mounted right. And those have been a pain. They're a nightmare to get to. There's previous episodes of me pulling all sorts of interesting shapes, trying to test them. And, uh, but, we're, but, but we're finally on the final lap of that. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think we've got a final design ready. So we'll have those printed and going in, hopefully in our next episode. So yeah, all of these things are going to be coming up in some future episodes. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit the little notification bell. Like and comment if you would have done this any better. You know, aside from, I don't know, checking the light before you fit it to make sure that it was actually e-marked. That would have been a really smart one. You can support us at shop.pedalbox.show by buying merch that we're actually wearing. I promise yours won't have holes in it like this one does. But long sleeve and beanies for the winter, t-shirts for just looking cool, and mugs for tea copious amounts of tea. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Thank you very much for watching, for sticking with us through all of this stuff. There's still a lot to do because there's a whiteboard of things like drive shafts and windows that isn't even listed in here. And we do need to get to those at some point. So we will see you in the next episode when hopefully we'll cross some more things off.